This animated film depicts events which took place many years ago, in a time before teenage girls knew what a smartphone was. I know many of you will find that part harder to believe than the fact that these two girls encountered some kind of upright walking canine man in the woods on the scariest night of their lives. Meet Mia and Leah, not their real names. These two girls are fraternal twins, meaning they were born the same night, but they do not look identical. They were unfortunately born to poor parents in the rich parent world of the 1980s, ashamed of their upbringing and receiving harsh hazing from their richer schoolmates. The duo has decided to run away from home to the wooded hills of Pennsylvania. Neither girl thought to bring a compass with them or a map. There was no such thing as GPS either. They were lost long before they realized they were, and the woods of Pennsylvania are about the spookiest place that you can get lost in, in all the world. There were little creatures observing them ever since they entered the forest, but neither Leah nor Mia sensed one single one of them. Those woods are enchanted, I assure you, so I urge you to be cautious when traveling there. There are predators in Pennsylvania too, and I'm not just referring to some of the politicians either. I know from personal experience that there are things in those woods that can eat you alive, and that's no exaggeration. And when the girls started to hear that wolf-like howling, then they began to realize that too. Feeling too frightened to stay where they were, the girls made a big mistake by leaving their campsite at night. They really should have waited for the sun to come up before moving and hunkered down for the night. But instead they wandered right into the darkness that those terrifying howls were emerging from. It was a mistake to be certain, and there was someone, or something, waiting for them in those woods, waiting for them to make that very error. The howls stopped, and the girls hoped they were finally free of whatever creature had been making them. They wandered down a path in the woods into a clearing, and there, in that clearing, stood a massive man-thing, a dog-headed monster that stood like a man. Its muscles were so massive that he seemed to be twice as wide as a very tall and well-built man. Yet he was covered entirely in fur, and his pointed ears up on top of his head betrayed that he could not, in fact, be human. The girl stood frozen, unsure what to do. They were already tired from the chase, and this beast man was obviously a greater athlete than either of them. If they ran from it, they wouldn't get far. Even if they ran in different directions, he'd be certain to get at least one of them. It seemed as though they would be victims of this great beast on that night. But instead of advancing upon them, instead of pouncing on the girls and tearing them limb from limb to devour as his dinner, the beast stood still and stared, observing the two lost teens as if searching for something in their eyes. Finally, he lifted one arm and pointed away into the woods. Confused, the girls at first just stared. Then it dawned on them. That creature was pointing their way out of the woods. It wasn't there to catch them. It was there to get them back to civilization. Walking in the direction they were instructed, the girls soon found themselves walking up to the woods that they recognized behind their parents' house. Mia and Leah were not punished that night. Instead, they were greeted with news that their father had gotten a new job at better pay, and that would mean the family would be moving away from the bullies and troubles that the girls had been trying to run away from. This would be the beginning of a good period for all of them. How do I know so much about this family and the events of that night? Because I am the father of those girls who are now adults with families of their own. 
And although they still do not know this to this day, I was also the werewolf that guided them home. The end. Hey, I don't want to sound like some kind of braggart, but we just got rejoined by Patricia Taggart. That's right. Patricia Taggart has just rejoined our channel members. And so can you, by listening to what this next guy has to say. Hank? Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or Join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 Lascari. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after I think three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Scary, scary, scary stories. stories.